Hello and welcome to Frank's School. I'm trying to teach, trying to show you the, uh, how to love German grammar. Grammar. And this is the third shot I'm going at it. And I've started uh, to, to work with the, uh, the word the. I've gone right straight to the hardest thing about German grammar, I think. But before I go on with that, James Burke, uh, before I get too far away from if you want to know more about James Burke, I've found, well, I want to know more about him and what he thinks, especially what he thinks now. And he is on YouTube. If you will look at James Burke Speaks, there he's giving a speech to a science society. And there's other places as well. And uh, I mean, I'm telling you to go someplace. I have not gone yet because I haven't had time, but I will. Okay, now, yesterday uh, I said uh, something like the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, lady sent the maiden to the child of the beast. Des Beastes. I had said, I think it needs an S there, maybe. And uh, Shirley, my German friend, uh, you're going to hear her voice here uh, soon. Uh, today, actually. Um, she said, yeah, it's got to be like that. Um, now, uh, another thing I want I wanted to tell you at some point, that in German, all nouns are capitalized. All nouns are capitalized, not just proper nouns. But that's a matter of spelling. That, that's not really grammar. Uh, but if you've noticed that I'm doing that, well, that's the reason. Uh, it, it, okay, the, now, uh, here's what I've shown you so far. And yesterday I said uh, that's 12 slots uh, occupied by six uh, forms of the word the. Uh, now we've got the plural, potentially 24, uh, 12 more slots, because you could take all of this and make it plural. But I said it's not going to be so hard. Well, that's because all three genders, they collapse, and they become the same. So we really only have four more uh, to worry about. And I put them in this sentence. Die Männer, schick, die Männer schicken die Männer zu den Männer der Könige. Now it's plural. The men send, send the men to the men of the kings. Uh, of the kings. This is all plural. Uh, now, man has become menner, and uh, I, I'll say something about that when I get to nouns, but I'm going to hold that for you. It's called mutation, and it happens in German a lot. Just like we say a man, but to men, man, menner, uh, we do it a little bit in English. <laughs> they do it everywhere, uh, or not everywhere, but oh, so often in German. Uh, and schick has become, uh, schickt has become schicken, because this needs to agree. This is agreement. This is the, the plural uh, subject uh, affects the verb, and it has to become plural too. Die Männer zu den Männer der Könige. Könige. This is plural. Uh, and, and I'll talk about nouns eventually, but nouns are not, nouns are tricky, <laughs> but not like the word the. All right, let's see what we've got, the, die Männer. Well, this is a subject, so this is the uh, nominative case. This is what does it. Sch uh, 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 schicken die Männer, this is the direct object. Uh, uh, these men do it to these men, so as direct object, that's going to be accusative. And it's D, the same, just like in uh, uh, feminine, and just like in neuter. Uh, zu den Männer, to the men. Well, here is a dative case. Uh, and remember, the first day I forgot to put zu, I didn't think it had to be there. Uh, uh, den, den Männer der Könige. Uh, well, here's possessive, of the kings. If it were only one king, it would be this Uh <laughs> My dog wants to play with the cat. Uh, so, uh, and then it, it's the same. So there we have it. Uh, this is called Der die Das. If, uh, I mean, a German would refer to this, the study of this, as you're studying Der die Das. Der die Das. Um, six, uh, <clears throat> we haven't got new forms. If there's any way that, that you can find to, to make this easy. Uh, easier for you. Uh, uh, there are charts online that set it up a little bit differently to try to make it easier. Uh, I mean, the similarity here. Uh, there, there are similarities. 
But I don't know. That, that could just uh, that that could just end up confusing you. I don't know. Unless maybe you realize that here is is something new. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, now, uh, so where's the fun? Uh, I mean, uh, you, oh, oh I, I wrote Decay of Cases. One of the things about German, one of the reasons I love German, and I said it's a little bit like swimming upstream, is because uh, I almost think of it going from east to west. As you go westerly with languages, they become simpler. English is an extreme example of that. English is comparatively so simple. All of this stuff, remember, is just one word, the. Um, in French, you've got uh, le and la. There's two ways to say the. And if it's plural, it's le. There's three. Uh, and that's really all you need to worry about. Here there's six. And as I say, well, it's because in, in French, they don't, uh, gender doesn't show. They do have masculine and feminine, which makes it harder than, uh, than English. Uh, and they distinguish plural. Uh, uh, Swedish, I think, is simpler. I'm not so sure about Danish. I think Spanish, well, I know Spanish is way simpler. This would be uh, uh, el and la, and this would be uh, uh, las, uh, uh, las and los. There'd be, there's four ways to say, to say uh, uh, the in Spanish, because they do have gender, and when you get to the plural, they continue to distinguish gender. Uh, but simpler, well, um, th that's called the decay, sometimes the decay of sense of cases, or the decay of inflections, or the decay of case endings. Uh, if you go in the other direction, I think Lithuanian uh, and uh, Icelandic, they're the only ones I really know too much about. I think they've got seven, as many as seven cases. Latin has at least five. Uh, but see, these, that language is usually not spoken up to speed. German still has the four. And, you know, and another thing in German, Germany, there's Hochdeutsch, High German, and there's all other kinds of German. Uh, well, Sw Swiss German isn't really exact. I mean, it's, it, it's a whole rainbow of languages there. And I'm not so sure what's become of the cases here in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch. I don't know. Eventually I'll probably find out how much of this is left. Do they still have all this? Maybe they have more? Um, all right, now, the fun. Uh, it, it, the, the Grimm Brothers uh, uh, fairy tale, the, uh, uh, the Frog King, uh, the Frog Prince, I think it's called in English. Uh, I had it, I put it in uh, Loving German in that playlist, and I had a character read it, and you see it on the, on the screen. And the opening sentence uh, it goes like this. Well, then later uh, in the story, uh, Shirley read it well. I mean, she read it in real German. My accent is not right, and I even built that into the story. Klaus, his, his accent was, was kind of strange. And so, so uh, uh, the character of Heidi uh, said, here, I'll read it, and, and uh, that you'll hear uh, Shirley's voice. And, and here's what she's going to read, uh, the opening sentence. She'll go a little bit further. In den alten Zeiten, wo, wo das Wünschen noch geholfen hat, lebte ein König, dessen Töchter waren alle schön, aber die Jüngste war so schön, dass die Sonne and on it goes. Well, I wrote that there because let's take a look at this in action. In the old times, their in produces a dative and it's plural. In the old times, when uh, the wishing, das Wünschen, well, Verbs that, that are, in German you use the infinitive, in English we would say wishing, we use what's called a gerund in English, but it doesn't exist in German. But whenever that happens, it's going to be neuter. So, wishing still helped. Das Wünschen, there it is, wishing, it, this is the subject. Das Wünschen noch gehoffen hat, lebte ein König, dessen Töchter, who's lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful, but the... The young, the youngste, the youngest. Well, here again we've got a uh, uh, feminine, uh, uh, and it's the subject. The youngest was so beautiful that the sun, die Sonne, uh, die Sonne, 
And from this, you can conclude that the word son in German is feminine. If it were masculine, if it were the moon, it would be der Mond. Uh, I, I can't think offhand of if it were the, the kid, the, the child, das Kind. But it's not, it's die. So here we've got four times the word the has appeared. And uh, by word count, uh, oh yes, and one other thing. By word count, I think you're going to find that it is very, just like in English, it is very, very common. Oh, I know what I did. Das die Sonne, die... She's, she's about to say it again. But <laughs> here it's not the word the. It means something else. That's why I stopped short of that. Uh, German grammar is, <laughs> is really something. Uh, all right. Uh, so anyway, if you go to that, and I'll put the link in the description, but there's the number, 2.147.3. There you'll hear Shirley reading that sentence, and you can see it as well. Uh, and she reads the whole story. All right, well, I hope, you've, uh, I hope you're beginning to love German grammar. Uh, I'll see you next time.